The fascia iliaca plane block is a useful technique for anesthetizing several key components of the lumbar plexus and has been shown to reduce pain intensity and opioid use as well as adverse outcomes such as delirium in patients who present with hip fracture. It's also excellent for post-op analgesia following hip arthroplasty and in this video we'll discuss the anatomy, sonoanatomy, and technique for the superinguinal fascia iliaca plane block. This technique has gone through several iterations over the years, starting with a landmark-based approach where the inguinal crease was trisected and the needle advanced just distal to it until two pops were felt. Then we injected a gallon of local anesthetic and hoped it got to the right place. Early ultrasound approaches used the same infrainguinal technique, but in the last decade, many have migrated to the technique we'll discuss today, the supra-inguinal fascia iliaca, or sci-fi. The iliacus fascia is a wide, sheet-like structure that lines the muscular bowl of the pelvis, overlying the iliacus and psoas major muscles. It continues beneath the inguinal ligament where it becomes continuous with the epimysium of the iliopsoas muscle group. We're interested in three nerves and their relationship to the fascia iliaca, the lateral femoral nerve, the femoral nerve, and the obturator nerve. These three nerves are bound down to the iliopsoas muscle in the pelvis by the fascia iliaca, and the principle of this block is that local anesthetic that's injected under the fascia in large volumes will spread broadly under that sheet and reach these three nerves. As mentioned, early attempts used an infrainguinal approach. The problem with that was it just didn't work. Even with large volumes, not enough local anesthetic traveled up and over the brim of the pelvis to result in a block of more than just the femoral nerve, and if you were lucky, the LFCN. With the sci-fi approach, the needle tip is advanced to a point deep to the fascia iliaca but superior to the inguinal ligament so that the local anesthetic stays trapped in the bowl of the pelvis. In comparative studies with the infrainguinal technique, the sci-fi provides more extensive spread, more reliable blockade of the obturator nerve, greater pain relief, and reduced opioid consumption. Why should the sci-fi do better than the old school infrainguinal? Well, two potential reasons. First, by putting local anesthetic next to the relevant nerves in a more proximal location, there's a higher likelihood of blocking the articular branches before they leave the femoral and obturator nerves. Secondly, there's just a better chance of getting the obturator nerve altogether. Imaging studies have shown that the infrainguinal technique rarely, if ever, gets local anesthetic anywhere close to that nerve. Is the obturator nerve even important? Well, if we consider the innervation of the proximal femur, we see that the femoral and obturator make up a large proportion of that nerve supply. The LFCN is also important, as that anesthetizes the skin over the greater trochanter, where much of the surgical action is likely to take place for hip fracture repair. With the patient's supine, the anterior superior iliac spine is palpated. A linear transducer is placed in the parasagittal orientation, just medial to the ASIS. The probe is then translated a few centimeters caudally until the brim of the pelvis is seen. This should put the probe squarely over the inguinal ligament as well. A needle is then advanced in plane from the inferior aspect with the aim of popping through the fascia iliaca north of the inguinal ligament. One important landmark is the deep circumflex iliac artery. This runs laterally from the femoral on top of the fascia iliaca and therefore serves as a good landmark for whether your needle and or local anesthetic is indeed in the right plane. Okay, so here's the imaging. You want to first identify and center the pelvic brim. The iliacus muscle can be seen coursing up and over the brim to enter the thigh, and the tough fascial sheet that lines this is, of course, the fascia iliaca. Look for the circumflex artery, or in this case, two arteries, pulsating superficial to the fascia just above the brim. You should also see a slip of internal oblique muscle on the same side. The goal of needle advancement is to drive the needle to the underside of the fascia while at the same time being on the pelvis side of the brim. A test injection here shows intramuscular spread. The tip was not in the correct fascial plane. Oops, intramuscular again. It's good to see what an intramuscular injection looks like because those would have represented failed blocks. There's little chance the local anesthetic would have spread to the relevant structures when it was trapped inside the muscle. Okay, let's try that again. Here comes a needle. And... Ah. This time, we see the muscle unzippering off the overlying fascia, creating a large puddle of local in a potential space that spreads down along the iliacus muscle into the pelvis. Note that little, if any, local is spreading into the thigh. That's because the brim and inguinal ligament create a pinch point, and the resistance to flow is high enough that it all stays trapped in the pelvis. Also note the circumflex vessels superficial to the fascia. This is a good confirmatory sign. If you see local on top of the vessels, you're too superficial and your block won't work.
The sci-fi is a volume block, and in order to reach all three nerves, femoral, LFCN, and obturator, studies like this one have shown that 40 mils seems to be an ideal volume for adults. We use 40 mils of dilute ropivacaine with epinephrine. 0.2% is usually dilute enough to avoid causing any motor block of the femoral, but in cases where avoidance of motor block is paramount, such as same-day hip arthroplasty cases, consider dropping the concentration down to 0.1% to ensure you're only getting sensory fibers. The 40 mils will do a good job of blocking the femoral and LFCN more than 90% of the time. The obturator is a little less reliable, but that volume still seems to result in blockade about 75% of the time. Here are some fascia iliaca tips. There are several descriptions of how to achieve the correct starting image. There are descriptions of bow ties and other soft tissue landmarks, but these can be deceiving, especially in obese patients. Bones don't lie. Use your fingers to palpate the ASIS, then place the probe immediately medial to that. Sliding the probe a few centimeters south will bring the pelvic brim into view. Number two, a shallow trajectory is one of the keys to making sure your tip enters the correct plane and doesn't wind up intramuscular. Also, the more parallel your needle is to the probe surface, the better you'll see your needle. As you can see here, the fascia iliac is not all that deep at the level of the pelvic brim, and that's true even in big patients. Finally, it's important the local be placed cephalad to the brim of the pelvis. This allows it to be trapped in the pelvis by the pinch point of the brim and ensures the full volume of local is available to do its job on our nerves of interest. Try hard to avoid an injection point at or caudad to the brim where local might spill into the thigh instead.